Good evening to you all and welcome to this week's weekly market presentation by uh, presented by SC Securities Private Limited. So uh, this week, as usual, we will be looking at market updates and key economic highlights. Also some updates related to global commodity markets and financial markets, and also the technical analysis part. So uh, looking at the screen, you will be able to see that how uh, the market, the all share price index together with the S&P SL20 index uh, behaved throughout the week. So for this week, starting from 20th December, uh, market started on a negative note. They are S&P SL together with ASPI resulted price declines. Their ASPI reached to a level of 11,650.10 uh, with points down by 103.34. And the S&P SL20 also declined by 63.30. So uh, this was basically due to the fact that uh, the upcoming festive season and investors kept on taking profits. So that's what the reason for such kind of a decline. And if you can remember, during last week, Moody's downgraded Sri Lanka's credit ratings from triple C to double C. So this also can be a possible reason for that kind of decline. And the turnover was amounted to be 5 billion rupees, relatively higher from this year's average daily turnover. And the, the turnover was basically boosted by HNB Finance PLC's acquisition of Prime Finance PLC via a block trade of 2,123 million. This acquisition consisted of 87.27% of outstanding shares and accounted for 39% of the total turnover reported for the day. So uh, on Monday, foreign uh, sales topped over foreign purchases, uh, resulting a net foreign outflow. This particular momentum was continued on uh, Tuesday as well. SPI declined to 11,640 points down by 9.19, together with the San PSL 20 uh, down by 0.17.69. So uh, for the day, turnover was even reduced from the previous day and was only amounted to be around 4 billion rupees. And uh, foreign purchases for the day took a value of 75 million over 61 million sales resulted for the day. So bouncing back from the red territory, SPI and SNPSL managed to reach to a green zone on Wednesday, uh, touching a new all-time high of 11,814.37 points up by 173. And SNPSL together with that uh, gained by 46.84 points to reach 4,219.52. So this, the regaining of investor confidence, regardless of the ongoing macroeconomic con uh, concerns, create this kind of a potential to the market. And the turnover was amounted to be somewhat lower to previous day, uh, usually below the, this year's daily average turnover. Uh, and the gains were majorly attributed by Sinkadakala Finance, LLC and also CLC. Looking at how market reacted on uh, Thursday, it reached to another milestone uh, and reached to another all-time high of 11,951.23 points up by 136. And SNPSL also increased by 30 points to reach 4,249.58. And uh, Thursday's turnover was relatively high, actually highest for this uh, entire week, which was a value of 6.6 .6 million. And foreign purchases also amounted to be a value of 106 million, uh, somewhat higher compared to the foreign sales reported for the day. And uh, the market actually, uh, the turnover was basically attributed by the uh, LIOC, uh, Lanka IOC, uh, price uh, went up due to the fact that it, SLC with, uh, since Sri Lanka was expecting, like, give uh, the LIOC will be given uh, more capacity in Trincomalee oil tank farms. And uh, that was basically the reason for the price pickup 
that could have been ex, uh, experienced in the in the uh, LIOC sector. So, uh, Udupusalava and Hapugastani plantation sector uh, stocks were all also gained up due to the recent acquisition conducted by Browns. So, uh, that particular two stocks was was also in the top gainers during the day. And when it comes to Friday, uh, SPI managed to uh, reach to a level of 12,070 for the first time in CSC's history. Uh, the SPI actually managed to reach to an intraday high of 12,000 during the Thursday session, but couldn't uh, sustain in that particular level. So today, the SPI went up by points 119, and S&PSL 20 also went up to a level of 4,253. So during uh, the Friday, the turnover was relatively low, which was only 2.8 million. That is basically the CSC, the Columbus Stock Exchange, only operated for like two hours because of the uh, half working day declared. And uh, during the two hour session, foreign sales amounted to be 68 million, whereas foreign purchases were only six, uh, 36 million. So we could positively expect this momentum to continue in next week as well. And so far for the week, ASPI increased by 3.61% and SNPSL increased by 1.51% with net foreign outflows of 99 million. Then moving to this week's economic update. So for the entire week, all the economic highlights can be summed up in a way like this. So statistics from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka released that the November inflation soared to double digits, where the value was turned around 11.1% for the month ended in November. That was basically attributed by the price increases in both the food and non-food categories. So uh, for the food category, the uh, value was increased up to 16.9% from uh, the uh, low compared to lower value, 11.7% in the month of October, whereas non-food segment was increased to 6.2% from 5.4% in the October. So this particular hike in the inflation was uh, resulting from the global commodity prices hike as of the central bank. And uh, fuel price hike, the recent government decision to increase the fuel prices could also further increase the inflation levels. And But the central bank claims that the, this can be transitive. Uh, this can be immediately eased. I mean, the necessary actions, the policy measures are undertaken to uh, ease the excessive demand pressures that are rising from the global front. So um, then uh, subjectively uh, to the price increases in wool, we could ex uh, we could have we have observed the fact that majority of the prices, in the bakery items and also transportation and freight charges increase compared and relatively to the price increases in the world recorded. So on the other hand, Central Bank assures that the official reserves will remain above $3 billion by the end of this year, 2021. Countries' forex reserves have dropped to $1.58 billion, and that's said to be only uh, worth equivalent for one month of imports. So uh, after seeing the potential risk of defaulting the uh, credit payments, the debt repayments, the, CB, uh, the majority of the uh, top officials from the government has made, uh, made their way forward to meet foreign countries and had made some swap arrangements for the country. So we have a uh, swap arrangement done with the Middle Eastern countries and also some with the regional banks uh, amounting to a total worth of 2 billion rupees, to, sorry, 2 billion US dollars. In addition to that, the immediate economic package was uh, uh, making its way to uh, contribute to Sri Lanka, that is from the uh, Indian party. 
And also it further said that the oil imports from Iran are planned to pay off the Sri Lanka, uh, for Sri Lankan tea. And on the other hand, the recent rise in the departures of foreign employment and also the recovery in the tourist arrival to country will hopefully ease the sinking pattern of uh, foreign reserves and we could expect some sort of a positive news come ahead. So pressure yields continue to rise up. Three month yield went up by 47, plus, uh, 47 basis points. So accordingly, three month treasury yield increased uh, from 7.24% to 7.71%, whereas six month increased from 8.03% to 8.10%, up by seven basis points. And 12 month went up uh, from, uh, sorry, 12 month actually declined from 8.06% to 8.02%, down by four basis points. So uh, CBSL actually offered uh, 47.5 billion worth of feet spent only accepted 40.1 billion out of it. And major demand and the acceptance could have been seen in the three month treasury sector. And it is unknown the fact that how much is held by the central bank side. So uh, when it comes to exchange rates, Three, uh, the rupee managed to appreciate over USD, UR, and Japanese yen, where we could have seen some sort of a depreciation over uh, Great Britain pounds. And coming to global commodity market updates for the week, the uh, all the commodities managed to rally with the Omicron news, the pros and cons both on the Omicron. Uh, oil prices fell on Friday with the investors perceiving that there could be a possible hit to oil demand. Uh, but on contrary, the gold prices copper together with aluminium increases where investors tend to believe that the economic impact that could have been experienced and uh, impacted for the economic fallout may not be that sort of big from the Omicron. So over that particular reason, the uh, global commodity prices went up and uh, aluminium price also rose to two month high on Thursday as the surging energy prices concerns higher production cost. So uh, moving to international financial markets, global markets open a fresh week on a negative note because of the disappointing worries about Omicron and the governments are trying to uh, impose restrictions. UK recorded over 100,000 Omicron cases in just 24 hours. That is the highest recorded value since the beginning of the pandemic. But by the end of the week, worries are kind of eased and the investors tend to believe that the, uh, the, uh, the, there won't be any sort of a big economic fall down that could have been resulted from the Omicron. So over that fact, the uh, Wall Street ended higher on Thursday. Uh, Dow Jones, S&P 500, and Nasdaq, all the three major indexes went up. Most of the Asian markets were up on Friday with positive expectations over Omicron, but Japan's Nikkei index rose a little bit lower uh, on uh, Friday's trading session as the uh, first infectant from the Omicron from Tokyo was uh, uh, discovered. Uh, during today's trading sessions. And uh, some markets, especially the Chinese blue chips, anyway, fallen, uh, slipped to 0.23% after the rising infections, and the government tend to lock down 3 million residents containing area in China. So this was basically from the my end, and I would like to hand over to Hari. Thank you, Sachini. So let's look at gold, what has happened uh, during the uh, past few days. <clears throat> so looking at gold, we can see uh, the price has initially reached a level of 1,800 once again, uh, where we get the psychological area of 1,800. And uh, the last trader price of gold is 1,808.47, and the RSI comes to a level of 56.17. 
so this is basically the daily rsi so previously we were able to see how gold actually got uh, rejected from the daily resistance 8840 8860 from that area and we had a fair, uh, some sort of a uh, uh, break breakout as well from that key area but it failed uh to close above the high of 1877.14 and it managed to again uh, come below the level of daily resistance 1840 1860 and further to daily support level 1740 1760 so after uh, testing the daily support level uh, it bounced back again to the 1800 zone and um, that key area which is actually considered as a psychological area uh, what we can clearly see is at the moment uh, that uh, even looking at the emas 18 and 80 emas that i have added which is uh, the red, red and blue uh, so basically we do have a crossing uh, which has occurred so therefore there might be a, a bullish momentum uh, after uh, in the coming week we might be able to see gold uh, sustaining over the level of 1800 then further testing the level of daily resistance level 1840 uh, 1860 so that the that key level could be tested again uh, for gold again so uh, previously even even though uh, the price was actually uh, consolidating over a period of time so you do like uh, you from the daily support level 1740 to 1860 we were able to see how the price was actually consolidating over and over again so that consolidation could happen again that we that weekly consolidation could happen again uh, from a uh, long term perspective looking at it from the chart uh, so where so sustaining above the 1800 uh, key area could actually uh, bring back gold to the level of daily resistance 1840 1860 and uh, this could be very Defined by the EMAs that I have used as well, because we had a, a minor retest as well, which is also higher low formation. So the next uh, formation would be a higher high, which would basically be above the level of 1814. So uh, looking at uh, the all share index, so uh, basically the moment the bullish momentum seems to be carrying forward and it's continuing uh, in a rally. So we had a higher high formation at the level of 11,871.72 and a higher low formation at the level of 11,454.14. So after getting rejected from my daily support level 11,450, 11, uh, we were able to see that previous structure high which was recorded 11,871.72 has been broken out and the daily previous daily resistance of 11,950, 12,000 uh that 12,000 key area being a psychological area has been broken out again and uh now the index is basically trading above the psychological area of 12,000 and the last uh closing was to 12,070.68 the rsi has come to a bit of an overbought region once again which is uh 73.65 in the daily chart so even though the rsi is at an overbought region no matter so basically if it sustains above the 12,000 a psychological area uh, there's not much of a worry because uh, the next daily resistance 12450 12500 could be once again tested after seeing some sort of a higher highs higher low formations because this bullish momentum could continue further uh, and also looking at the trend itself we can see uh, how uh, the market has actually made a higher high itself right now and uh, we might be able to see a small uh, test on the daily support level 11,950 12,000 once again or even if in, in the coming week if it close if it opens and closes above the level of 12,070.68 12, we might be able to see it moving towards the daily resistance 12,450 12,500 again so the moving averages of course indicates a strong very strong bullish momentum as uh, the index is trading above both the EMAs uh, exponential moving averages that I have added so basically it is trading about both 18 and 80 ms uh, which is 18 day period and 8 day moving average so long as these trading about the 12000 psychological area we might be able to expect it moving towards the daily resistance 12450 12500 once again so adding to the list would be our top pick of the week uh, which is cic holdings plc so looking at from the uh, monthly chart uh, so it has been basically consolidating uh, over the price level of 40 to 63 over the uh, past few months and now 
it ha it is trading near the weaker resistance 6063 where the last trader price is 62.5 so we might be able to see in the coming weeks uh it will might it might be get uh, it might basically close above the level of 63 and then the monthly resistance 7580 could be basically tested so we had a, a high on january which is 78 so that key area could be basically month, uh, tested once again which is at the monthly resistance 7580 the monthly rsi comes to a level of 71.61 at the same time and um, uh, even though it is trading at a weekly resistance 6063 uh, we might be able to see it closing above that 63 in the near future and uh, as per the moving averages that i have added 18 and 8 moving averages that uh, in the chart uh, it shows a strong bullish momentum as per as the price is actually trading about both the moving averages and uh, even this month we were able to see how it opened at 54.3 and uh, managed to make a high of 67.5 and uh, closed um, for the week uh, 62.5 so uh, if it sustains about 63 level we might be able to see moving towards the uh, 75 80 uh, key area of monthly resistance and if it fails to sustain over that key area we might be able to see some sort of rejections happening at the weekly resistance 60 63 and it could consolidate in between the level of 45 and 63 but um, uh, looking at it uh, from the the moving averages uh, it could get basically broken out from the 63 region and uh, the monthly resistance 75 80 could be once again uh, tested like uh, it has been tested in january so Thank you, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the uh, today's weekly market update and uh, have a wonderful weekend and a lovely Christmas. Thank you.